Welcome to this G review where I don't talk good things about Outlast. Or the other option, peace out. It ain't great. I am not a fan of hide and go seek gameplay in general. I really feel like they were created to gear towards the Twitch and YouTube user crowd and not for the entertainment of the average gamer crowd. But these games have gone on to commercial success, so maybe I'm an idiot. I never discount that possibility. Either way, come on in YouTube crowd and or Twitch crowd and let's talk about what I don't like about Outlast specifically. Oh god, he's an Instagram user. We get it, your life is so filmable. This hide or die horror genre came from the idea of your clock towers, your Resident Evil 3s, where you have this unstoppable force that ends up taking over and becoming the number one fear as you turn every corner and collect every item. The problem with that formula in Outlast is there are maybe three characters in the entire game that I feel like deserve that sort of reverence. He's running scared from guys that are half my size in real life, let alone this video game character size. Jenkins! Jenkins! Where are you? You're supposed to be at your de- What? Jenkins! There's no art allowed! This guy is making Leonardo DiCaprio's devotion to the job look pithy. And as George Clooney says, I don't give a damn how crazy they are. There is so little interaction in a game style like this to where even if you get caught, it's just like, God bless America, not again. Leave me alone, which isn't exactly fearful. You're just running around playing scared journalist, which I can go to a Trump rally and feel that exhilaration right now if I wanted to. That's not to say that all the creations are bad and that I didn't feel any tension whatsoever, because I did. Especially with Chris Walker and this underground water scene where there's just one spotlight and you have to slog through this really slow water to this metal decrepit stair structure where you can hear him just grunting and breathing and whistling whispering in the dark, and that's done really well. I love that part. That and when the twins would intermittently show up and just glower over you through fences or what have you, those were the high points for me as far as tension and just palpability of fear. So this is how Mount Meat Locker earned its nickname. But that was really about it. I mean, once upon a time, I would have loved this game because of all the jump scares. But of course, that is the most overused fart joke in the horror genre, no matter which medium we're looking towards. A couple of small details I really did like as far as you have to research this place. You are here on a mission, so you have to keep your camera going at all times. And then the aspect of the battery is, of course, attached to your camcorder was downplayed. This was collectibles and flashlights all all rolled into one single meter that you had to keep track of, so I really did like how careful they were with treating the player's time and energy so you could more focus on rooting around for all this evidence and all this information about this hellscape. A prototype Futurama head museum. Obviously, I did find at least a few of the characters engaging, although not many were interesting, so to speak. It just, everything seems to come off as a very shallow popcorn horror movie. That being said, of course, there's Chris Walker. The priest is okay. He's fine for what he is. Um, the doctor, the main doctor that you find about halfway through the game. He's great. He's terrific for a laugh. His voice actor, you could tell, had a blast doing the work Worst he could think of, but it just kind of leaves me wishing that everyone else was having as much fun or seemed to be having as much fun as that doctor character. Kind of a comedy horror that would have been terrific. Another lover of golden showers. Mm -hmm. As I already talked about, this game is jump scare laden from head to toe, and that's really the only kind of horror that you get here. There's really no build up to anything else. Mr. Jumpscare. The main character is named Miles, which bonus points for that, but he has a personality, he does have a voice, but as is standard in really pretty much any first person horror game, it's not enough. There's not enough there to really make him a character. We don't even really get to hear him say why he's so obsessed with this case. Why this assignment, you know? It's just an introductory note and there's no doubt as he's climbing through windows and and just doing all this weird stuff, weirdly devoted to we can surmise maybe winning a Pulitzer? Like, what is his endgame? A Nobel Peace Prize? Talk to us! 
That's Dr. Jump Scare to you. I didn't go to seven years of Jump Scare College just to be called Mr. When you do a Broad Strokes horror game like this, it ends up feeling like a billion other Broad Strokes horror anythings that have come and gone. You have to do better than that if you want to catch something beyond the screamer crowd. Best coffee mug ever. Games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill, Dead Space, Clock Tower, the list goes on, already prove that you could do the stalker type hide or die game style, but with other aspects in there. So just boiling it down to one just doesn't feel fresh. For those reasons and more, this is a 5 out of 10 game for me. And to be fair, I never played Whistleblower, and I have not played Outlast 2, so this is just the base game review. Thank you so much, whether you love me or hate me after this, stay tuned for some more spooky content this month on YouTube and on mygaming.com. Thank you again. Bye.